In this video, I'm going to describe the big picture framing of electromagnetic theory and talk about what the Maxwell equations are. E and M is the theory that describes how charges work and what kinds of fields they make. And theories that involve fields generally have two main parts. First, you need a set of rules that describes where the fields come from. Second, you need rules that describe what the fields do. In E and M, the rules that describe what fields do are pretty short. Electromagnetic fields exert forces on charges. Electric fields exert forces through F equals QE. And magnetic fields exert forces through F equals QV cross B. Oftentimes, these will be written in one line in what's called the Lorentz force law. With that in hand, all that remains is to figure out the rules that describe the sources of the E and B fields. That's what the Maxwell equations are. They're the laws that tell you about the sources of electric and magnetic fields. There are four Maxwell equations, two each for E and B. In integral form, they look like so. The first is what we call Gauss's law and it tells us that certain kinds of electric fields, those with divergence, come directly from charges. If you don't know what divergence is yet, you will by the end of vector calculus. Fields with divergence are conservative. If you integrate up a conservative field along a closed loop, you'll end up with a total of zero. Or if you prefer, conservative fields are such that if you go around in a circle, you end up right back where you started. The second Maxwell equation has no common name. And it tells us that there's no source for divergent magnetic fields. Magnetic fields with divergence simply don't exist. The third law is Faraday's law, which tells us about electric fields with a different shape, those that have curl. Fields with curl are non-conservative. If you integrate them around a closed loop, you'll get a non-zero answer. Fields like that are special in that they let you, among other things, go around in a circle picking up energy the whole time. And curly E fields can only exist if you have a magnetic field that varies in time. Note that you can use math identities and definitions to make Faraday's law look different, so expect to see it in other forms in other references. The fourth Maxwell equation is the Ampere-Maxwell equation. And it's the only one that the guy named Maxwell was directly involved in discovering. It tells us that curly B fields come from electric currents and also from time-varying E fields. And please note that electric currents are just moving charges and that the time-varying E and B fields in these equations also originally came from charges. Ultimately, all E and B fields come from charges, either stationary or moving. Putting it all together, the Maxwell equations plus the Lorentz force law are the complete classical theory of electromagnetism. Everything else can be derived from these five equations. They're even consistent with relativity right out of the box. It's only when quantum mechanics rears its ugly head that this set of equations starts to need a bit of touching up. Fortunately, that's a problem for another day.